It is a beautiful morning here in Ireland. We are saying goodbye to Crosshaven and heading up the west coast to the culinary capital of Ireland, Kinsale. see the sun is shining and um, we've got a nice little trip ahead of us we're up here at the Royal Cork Yacht Club so we're just gonna come out around the corner pass a couple freighters and then up around here to Kinsale and once we get over here around the corner we're gonna come in and tie up over here to the Kinsale Yacht Club a little bit here and it is so cool to have France, Spain and Portugal on our function display. Made it! I'll be glad when it's warm. <laughs> yes. Well we didn't think we'd be able to find the wind but we found it. Uh, we're on a broad reach and we're just slowly making it up the coastline. sail today uh, and now we're coming in to the uh, river and gonna go up to Kinsale. Stargirl's just coming in and we're gonna go all the way up to here. So not very far but um, definitely gonna have to be watching the boys because there's some shallow spots through here. the dishes cleaning up after a wonderful dinner and it is our first day at anchor here in Ireland so we are relaxing today and uh, get ready to have a hot chocolate and some hot tea because it's a little bit chilly and then we'll sleep it's a good day Good morning. Here we are in Kinsale Harbor. It is a nippy day <laughs> this morning. A little chilly. We're getting ready to head into the Kinsale Yacht Club now. Let's tie up and explore the city. We came in yesterday and it was uh, pretty full on the docks there, so no room. But there's room for us now. Uh, the only question is when we set the anchor, uh, last night it seemed to set well, but then we could hear the anchor chain dragging across rocks uh, last night a bit when it got windy. So we're hoping in this mooring field that we're not hung up. Fingers crossed. Hey, the windless whisperer heads to the foredeck. There's definitely enough space for us, so we're just going to slide in on the back of the dock here. Here we are, the Kinsale Yacht Club.
Once we tied up, we checked into the Yacht Club, said hello to the Harbor Master, and decided to wander around this quaint little village to check out our new surroundings. We are going to go check out Fort Charlie. Fort Charles? Charles Fort. Charles Fort. <laughs> And the good thing is she has the GoPro because I could walk her off the dock and she wouldn't even notice till she hit the water. Yes. And the plan is we're going to catch a cab there because it's six kilometers away and we're going to walk back and do some pub hopping. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right. Taxi time. Yeah, Green Island. It is gorgeous. We've been here three weeks maybe. Yep. Charles Fort is a classic star-shaped military fortress and is one of the largest military forts in the country. It was constructed between 1677 and 1682 during the reign of King Charles II and was named in his honor. Kinsale was already a site of foreign invasion when the Spanish force landed there in 1601 and Charles Fort has been associated with some of the largest events in Irish history including the Willamite War of 1690, the Napoleon War, and the fort continued to be used throughout the 19th century. Charles Fort remained garrisoned by the British Army and was burned by the anti-treaty forces during the War of Independence in 1922 when the fort was finally abandoned. There are guided tours, but we opted to wander through all the buildings and to get a sense of history coming to life, as turning every corner revealed something new. While most of the buildings are simply shells, there are many relics of its military era through the fort. Some of the buildings have been restored and house exhibitions on the history of the garrison. As you walk through them, there are informational panels and photographs relating to the various regiments associated with the fort. We have toured yet another fort. Now we're going to make the long trek back to Kinsale. It's too early. We, we screwed this up. We came too early. So we came too late to miss the tourists and too early to get a pint on the walk back. <laughs> Lesson to all of you travelers out there. <laughs> oh well. C'est la vie. La vie. Come, baby. All right, here we go. Skilly walk. The skilly walk. I like Monty Python and the skilly walk. You know what we need? We need um, coconuts so we could make the I'll horse, make the horse, horse sounds. Yeah. The skilly walk runs along the coastline between Kinsale and Charles Fort. It's a six kilometer journey and on the way you'll pass through the village of Summer Cove along with numerous pubs, cafes and restaurants. So there's no shortage of places to grab refreshments along the way. And just remember, start your stroll after 12 p.m. So this is pub number one that you should stop at and uh, yeah, it's closed. number two and it's closed we are back in Kinsale cheers baby cheers. 
Before we go, we've got one last visit here in the village, and it's Kinsale Mead Company. That's right, the crew is going to taste this medieval drink of the gods and kings. But first, we need a little bit of a history lesson. Mead in Ireland was bought, brought in roughly around the 5th century, and it was brought in by an Irish monk um, hmm. called St. Mulligan. Um, so he was an Irish monk living in Wales, um, and he was also a beekeeper. So he kept bees and he kept honey over in Wales. And he was sent over to Ireland in the 5th century to convert us to Christianity. And it's said that St. Monica's bees over in Wales missed him so much that they flew across the Irish Sea. They were magic kind of bees. <laughs> and they found him in um, Timothy, is where he settled. So this is basically a hand-woven pipe. This is a model. Um, obviously, they usually be a, be a little bit bigger, um, but he introduced these, they weave them with straw, and they use these to keep bees. So they actually oh. catch wild hives and just keep them in here. This place here called Chop McCourta, um, and in English that means circling house. So basically what would happen here is they'd have feasts all along here in one big circle um, and celebrations. So basically they would drink mead at these festivals and a lot of people, when they think of drinking mead, they think of these drinking horns that the Vikings drank mm -hmm. out of. But we didn't drink out of these. We say um, they were too small for us. Yeah. <laughs> we did drink out of these guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is called the four person method. So this is um, carved out of one block of wood, mm -hmm. usually sycamore. Really heavy. I mean, like super heavy. Cool. Just yeah. up there. But oh, yeah. imagine that filled up with. Your oh, we you need one of those. <laughs> need one of those. Yeah, <laughs> definitely heavy. But yeah, this is the four-person method. So just like United, they pass yeah. that around in a circle and, and take turns drinking out of it at these. Eighteen twelve was the last time mead was made in Ireland. Um, so it was made by this guy called John Donahue, and he was the last mead maker in Ireland in two hundred years until we opened up. Mm -hmm. But before we yeah. start fermenting, we have to get the honey out of the barrels, um, which is quite a process. <laughs> uh, so because it's quite cool in here, we have to keep it cool for the fermenting and the maturing. Um, the honey tends to crystallize a little bit. So what we do is we make a mixture called a must. So it's literally just honey and warm water. Once that's ready, we pump it all into here. Um, these are fermentation tanks. So we use about one third honey, two thirds water. Um, so that's usually the mixture. If we're making berry meads, it's a little bit less water and the berries go on top. And then we put the yeast on top and then we close it. And that's everything that goes in there. It's very simple. They take about a week to ferment. So it's super quick. So it's really important that we, we taste it every day, which is the most important job. Um, and <laughs> we measure the alcohol level. Um, and we aerate it. So if it's a week for the berry meads or a month for the honey meads. Usually 12% are meads, 11-12% depending on the, the type. Um, and we use a commercial white wine yeast to get this percentage. Mm -hmm. Obviously our ancestors would drink it straight away with <coughs> yeast and everything in it, but uh, we don't want that. We want a nice clear mead. So when it's all ready, we do something that's called cold crashing. So this is dropping the temperature down to about 4 degrees Celsius, almost freezing. And this basically makes the yeast stop working. So the yeast stops eating all the honey and it goes to sleep. Um, and everything falls to the bottom and it's called flocculation. We pump our mead out. So it's pretty clear at this point. It's not very cloudy, but we filter it out and we pump it into these tanks here. And this is where it sits and matures. So it matures similar to wine, so it's quite harsh, there's a bit of a bite at the start, it's very fruity, um, and then slowly and gradually everything kind of mellows out. But obviously our ancestors didn't do this, they drank it, yeah. but it was a little, tasted a little bit different. <laughs> so before we uh, fill this up with meat, so this is going to be all connected, it goes straight into here. And we clip it on here and we fill it up with our meat. Everything's hand. Everything by hand, <clears throat> yeah. 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 They're quite a tart berry, so we use the chair. It does taste like it's made with a tart berry. Yeah. 
So the last one is a very special one. It's our local beekeepers, uh, the wildflower meat. So yeah, we make it using Paul's honey. And this is a slightly sweeter, it's kind of almost like an aperitif. It's 11% alcohol. Um, but yeah, this is this one, uh, one pot of honey mm -hmm. in each bottle of meat. Um, wow. wow. This is kind of yeah. an idea of it. It's a lot. A lot of it all gets fermented away, so you don't have to worry about all the sugar. So it's calorie free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you've that officially consumed good. meat. All right, I've consumed meat. It was very good. And we have a stash here to take back and put in the bilge. That was awesome. Good tour. Yeah. Really tasty. Game of Thrones, man. Game of Thrones. He's a meat guy. It's pretty light. Those guys were drinking some light stuff. <laughs> we're getting buzzed by every boat in the world. We had a boat come by earlier and congratulated us on our completion of our passage. It's a long passage. It was a long passage. It's hard, it's hard when somebody goes by yelling at you, congratulations on your passage, to actually explain that you didn't make the passage. You shipped your boat on a big transport ship. By that time they're out of range, so yeah. So I said thank you. <laughs> it's been a long last day here in Kinsale Harbor, but we pushed off the dock because we were going to make an early start to head for Dublin. Trivia. Did you know that Dublin is famous for Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars? Did you know that? Why? Alec Guinness. Huh? Get it? No, okay. Anyway, you've had a great time in Kinsale. We so, have. I think yeah. I've gained 10 pounds. But yes, we have yeah, had a great time. Food is amazing. Amazing food, amazing people. All of Ireland has been just the most amazing, friendly people. Mead. We, we got to drink mead. mead like a Viking god. Got to see more piles of rock. That was good. Kevin loves piles of rock. Well, I did like the first 47 big piles of rock. We went and walked around, but now I'm getting a little tired of piles of rock. But that's okay. It's a good excuse to drink. But we got one more stop. Hoth, Ireland, which is a suburb of Dublin. The Hoth Yacht Club is going to host us. Yeah. The hostess with the mostess. Look, there goes that boat. Tomorrow morning, when the sun rises, it'll be a new episode. We're out of here. But until then, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, click on that subscribe button and hit the little bell to be notified of the next episode, which is tomorrow morning and our first overnight passage of 2023. Until then, ciao, ciao for, for now. now.